But sometimes, unexpectedly, there are threats and challenges, there's adversity that comes from inside the church when people that we respect and trust turn out to be different than we thought they were, or at least than they profess to be. When that happens, we're all stunned. How do we process that? How do we move past that? Well, I know you're talking about Steve Lawson. Um, And I, I say that with the deepest agony in my soul. Um, but the first thing you have to understand is God is blessing this church in many, many ways. And that is one of the ways He is blessing us. To expose someone who is in a position they have no right to be in. To purify the church. To purify the church. I mean, this is the whole point of Revelation 2 and 3, right? Where the Lord sends all those letters to the churches and says, look, something isn't right in your church. You either deal with it or I'm coming and I'm going to blow the candle out and you're going to be out of existence. I mean, the church has two options. One, get right. Two, you're done. I mean, the church of Laodicea was done. Smyrna was done. Um... You either, you either deal with the sin. One of those letters basically says you have someone there who tolerates adultery. I'll remove the candlestick. It is fatal to a church to have that kind of behavior in leadership. And while none of us knew it or expected it because of the soundness of the theology the Lord knew. And the Lord said, for Grace Church, that's enough. For the Master Seminary, that's enough. Um, I think there's a, there has to be a weariness with the Lord. I think He has to be sick of superficial church worship. One of the downsides of not being here every Sunday morning is the agony of watching church on TV and the frivolity and silliness and superficiality. Um, the, the, the pragmatic movement, we all talk about pragmatism over the last 30, 40 years. Church is becoming pragmatic, trying to entertain unbelievers. I think there's a weariness with God with that. And some of those pragmatic um, churches, the, the ones that maybe had the greatest amount of influence, like Hillsong or um, the one in Dallas, or Robert Morris's church, which is right across the road from Tom Pennington's Faithful Church, Countryside Bible. Uh, the, the, the Lord is turning the spotlight on and um, saying that's enough. That's enough. And unfaithful leaders are being exposed as they should be. And while we would wish that it had never happened to us, we would be foolish to think that there wouldn't be an effort made by the enemy to plant in this church someone who could have a corrupting influence while apparently having a positive influence. That's the subtlety of Satan. And it almost seems to me that you'd have to have somebody like that here because we wouldn't take the the kind of leadership that other churches take to, to rise to this pulpit. Your theology has to be sound. And everything about you, as far as we know it to be, supporting that theology. So if we were going to have that, that's the kind of person it would be. But, I, I, but again, I, you know, as we get closer to the end, I think the Lord is purifying His church, and I, I'm so thankful for that. My heart and soul aches for Steve. Obviously, a uh, friend... I don't love him any less than I've loved him for 25 years. I I, I don't know how you preach past your conscience unless it's completely scarred over. Uh, But I, I pray constantly. In fact, find myself almost every night praying for him in some point in the middle of the night. 
So, um, but the Lord has favored us. He wants a pure church. I mean, the, the first instruction in the Bible for the church is if somebody sins, go to him, right? Matthew 18. And ultimately, if they don't repent, tell the church. Tell the church. Paul said, I want to present to the Lord a pure and chaste bride. Sometimes we know the sin and we can deal with it. Sometimes we don't know the sin and the Lord has to bring it out. But while my heart is crushed for the sinner, it is grateful for the Savior who is purifying his church. Along with that emphasis on purity, I know with our pastoral leadership team over the last several weeks, you've really been emphasizing the priority of unity. Mm -hmm. So I wanted to ask you, when you think about Grace Community Church and what it means to be unified in Christ, why is that such an important priority and how can we as members of this church pursue that biblical calling? Well, of course, we all heard this morning in John 17 that there is a, there is a spiritually organic unity. We're all one in Christ, right? And that ought to play out in how we live our lives. Um, just coming off that incident we were just talking about, when a church is so severely wounded, uh, it's like an animal. When that animal is severely wounded, all the predators will move in for the kill. And what I noticed online was this, as soon as this thing was exposed, those people who resent and hate and attack Grace Church all the time ramped up their attacks. And they started coming after us. And you can't let that happen. Uh, so you were there, right, in my house. We got together for two or three hours and we said, this is where we take our stand. This is where we love each other, we support each other, we uphold each other, we um, deal honestly with each other as leaders. Uh, we, we've got to circle the wagons, we've got to link our arms, we've got to make sure the chain is unbroken because when we're exposed like that, all the enemies are going to come at us with a vengeance. And if they can pit us against each other, they can do some real damage. Um, and I said, the, the damage is done. No more. We're going to be faithful to each other and faithful to Christ in our loving of each other. Um, none of us is perfect. We, we all have to concede, right? Something, sometimes a lot of things, I guess particularly to me. But the Lord wants us to be unified I love this, in the perfect bond of peace, peace with each other, the perfect bond of love. So we've got to find a way to close ranks and not let the wound be a, an opening for enemies to attack our integrity or to pump lies about us out onto the Internet. And we've got to be faithful to each other.